Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to people. We are thankful for you for helping, for getting to join us on this particular session. This is the last session of the day. You've been graced by other speakers before, and you've had very lovely and wonderful sessions. We believe that this is going to be an even better one. Um, sorry about that. So we welcome we welcome Larry to this session with us today. Uh, hopeful that we are going to get uh, even more than what we have been able to grasp in the previous talks that we've had. Larry, uh, a brief statement, is a co-founder at tech and technology lead at the Eight Value Group Communities companies. Sorry, and uh, that's the best I can do for now. I'm sure he has much much better ways of introducing himself. Uh, thank you so much, and the podium is all yours, Larry. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Juliet, uh, and everyone else on the stream. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, so without further ado, let me just get, uh, get to it. So this talk um, is a talk about uh, embracing testing in your day-to-day -day development, um, just how to to make it uh, easier. Uh, I believe Elixir makes it uh, quite easy. Uh, so if you're not if you're not doing any testing at the moment, I think this would be a, a good opportunity for you to see how easy it can be. If you're already doing some testing, uh, then um, maybe you'll learn uh, a few things, one or two things from here. Yeah, so my name is Larry Ware, and I'm uh, a co-founder and a tech lead at uh, Value 8, a group of companies group of technology, uh, software development and technology companies. Um, I have about 15 years of experience uh, in development across uh, different fields and different technologies, and uh, about six years of experience uh, shipping Elixir applications. Uh, just to mention as well, uh, my company has been uh, shipping Elixir applications for the same around six years uh, in production, and all our applications are built uh, in Elixir and Alan. So to get into testing, um, uh, for me, there's, there's a few reasons why you should always uh, have automated tests uh, within your code base. Um, the primary being uh, increased productivity. Um, I, I imagine uh, anybody building an application uh, in this day and age, uh, having to test manually, perhaps uh, using the browser, uh, going through uh, setting up whatever you need to set up if let's say you're building some kind of authentication system, for example. It takes a lot of uh, time and effort to have to do it over and over again just to make sure it's working. While if you're running it via an automation test, you always uh, you always have it uh, at hand. You iterate on it much faster as compared to manual testing, which of course takes quite quite some time. And uh, you have to keep a lot on your mind just to make sure you're doing the right thing at any time. So automating this uh, is definitely the easier way to, to go. Uh, second on my list is um, stability and predictability of, of any code base. Uh, you ensure that things things work the same way uh, anytime. Meaning that uh, perhaps if you, if you write a test and you're deploying, especially if you're doing this with a, a CI CD pipeline, you are always sure that your code is working as expected and is working the same today as it was yesterday and any, any other day. Uh, so this, for me, is a very big reason why you should always um, automate your tests uh, and keep your code base um, properly tested. And uh, last but not least, um, for maintainability, I believe uh, writing unit tests is the best way to go. Um, one, if you're, if you're doing any changes to your code base, it's always be easier if you have tests that you can always rely on in case uh, you make changes or you make any breaking changes, your tests would and should always tell you and point in the right direction. So you don't deploy anything that's broken or not working. Uh, as well as when it comes to collaboration, if you have team members who are working on the code or if you're uh, trying to collaborate with other people in, in the open source community, uh, for instance, it's much easier for someone to get in uh, in a properly tested code base uh, and collaborate, uh, contribute some code, but still be sure that it's working the same way it was working before, before they made any changes. 
So with that, uh, let me jump to um, uh, a, a scenario, an example of um, how uh, I like to write my test. Um, so I did a small um, live notebook uh, just to walk through it. So given uh, this scenario, um, this is a very common scenario in any application, uh, registration and a login flow. Um, for this, the requirements are such that uh, a user provides their email address uh, for registration. And at this point, um, we don't immediately uh, register the email, but we want the user to verify that they actually own that email address. So a token will be generated and sent uh, to the same email address with a link. And using the link, the user would verify that they own the email address and uh, they would can go ahead and uh, set the password and uh, register for an account. Uh, so as a requirement as well, we want to ensure that, that the email address is unique and we'll show the user any errors when it comes to whether the address is not of a valid format or is already registered uh, with us. So uh, some things on the acceptance criteria for, for this particular feature. Uh, the users, uh, so we expect an email address as an input we will show a success message and send a verification link if the email is valid and unique. We will show an error message if the email address is uh, invalid uh, or if it already exists. Uh, on verification, we will show, uh, we will expect a link and we will show an error if the link has expired, if it's been a, a period of time specified by us, perhaps a day. Uh, we'll also show uh, an error if the link by any chance is invalid, so maybe someone trying to put some invalid data just to, to try and spam the system. And uh, once successful, we will log the user in. So a basic schema for, for this, uh, we have a verifications table with just an email address. So this is where we would store any attempted verifications. Uh, there's no unique constraint on this, so the same email address could be verified, uh, could be started here multiple times, but not verified. And then we have um, a users table, which is where the user will actually be registered. So we have an email address and the password hash, and the email address in this case would be unique. So I would start by saying uh, to make your tests um, very maintainable. I prefer to test only what is in scope. So as a very simple example, uh, a simple register page that just shows a HTML register form uh, would have a simple test that just checks that uh, the HTML response is valid and contains uh, some text. So in this case, it contains the user email field. So it's a very simple test, but having this in place means any anytime anybody changes that page, if it doesn't meet these requirements, you can quickly tell that something something is wrong, something is not working the way it's supposed to work. Uh, if we look at our second acceptance criteria, that we must show a success message and send a link if the email is valid and unique. So this one is a bit more uh, complex. Um, it, it has a case condition with two branches, an OK uh, clause and an error clause. So in the same uh, in the same vein of only testing what is in scope, uh, this is what uh, I would look at uh, tests that cover these two scenarios uh, in time. So if you look at the code, you can see that it's uh, it it calls an accounts to send verification function, uh, of which we're not uh, we at this point. If you're looking at the code, you're not sure what exactly that does, but in the spirit of testing only what you see you expect to uh, either get an OK, uh, put a flash message and redirect, or get an error and render the same page showing the same errors. So if you look at a test uh, that would cover these scenarios, uh, the first one, which is when it's successful, it redirects and shows the flash message. Uh, would be very straightforward, where you, uh, you make a post to the endpoint with valid data. You ensure that it's redirected, and you ensure that you get a flash message. You go ahead and maybe check that the exact flash message is what you expect. So this covers the okay scenario end-to-end uh, -end without worrying about what is happening in the send verification functions. The second one uh, handles the error clause. 
where if it's unsuccessful, it will show the error. So in this case, uh, we do a post the same with uh, an invalid email. So in a place like this, you could choose to either have a blank email, have a unique email. It doesn't really matter uh, because all you're trying to test is that if there's an error in the chain set, you will get uh, an error response and you will do the following things. So in this case, we just want to check that uh, we've got a message that something cannot be blank. So that covers exactly what we see uh, without without worrying too much about what's happening in the background. So we'll, we'll talk about uh, that next. So uh, on, the on the next one, I also want to talk a bit about uh, creating test data. Um, for this, uh, I prefer to use uh, a library called uh, X Machina, which allows you to quickly um, and easily create uh, some test data that's destroyed after the test is run. So um, looking at uh, how that would be, um, for anyone who's not uh, done this, I've used X Machina before, it's a quick description is you define a data factory uh, that uses uh, the X Machina X tool. Um, uh, module, and for any uh, any schema that you want to that you want to create, you will define a function uh, suffix to it, that's for factory, and define how you want to build that data. So this is a very simple one, which just picks the defaults in this case. So uh, if I move on to the test for this, uh, for the accounts, the send verification test. Um, line 10 is where we use uh, the X Machina library, which is very straightforward. It is called an insert uh, callback function. You specify what uh, schema you're trying to create and some parameters that you pass to it. And this, this will create an insert, uh, a user record for you. So once we have a user record, uh, we want to make sure that if it's, already, if it's duplicated, we want to get an error. So this is all we're testing. We call the function with the duplicating numbers. In this case, we're also trying to test that uh, it doesn't matter what case the email address is in, it is still failed in the same way. So at least discovering multiple cases within the same test. So we make sure that once we call that function, we get an error with some uh, with a chain set that contains uh, the email. So with that done, um, we have another requirement which we haven't uh, satisfied yet which is uh, sending a verification link. So this is where um, I like to use mocks, uh, which would allow you to test things that are outside your system. So for example, an API request, and in this case, sending of an email, because I imagine when you're writing, when you're running your tests, you don't want to be sending emails for every test that you run. So to ensure that this works, uh, we will implement uh, a mock uh, to send the email, and for this we use uh, the Mox library. So uh, how I like to do this is uh, start by defining an interface that you want to implement. So in this case, um, because we know we use Swoosh, it's pretty easy to try and conform to that uh, and build our interface around. So what Swoosh has is a deliver function that takes uh, just one argument, uh, the message that you're trying to send. So we we'll build a mailer, uh, our own mailer that uh, conforms to this. So uh, this is what uh, Swoosh generates for you by default. Uh, this comes with the default Phoenix generator. So you have a mailer already defined. So what we define is our own behavior uh, with a callback. Uh, a callback for a deliver function that takes uh, some data, a map, and returns OK and, uh, and anything. Uh, what would happen then would be instead of calling swoosh directly, we would be calling our behavior. So to have that uh, done, we, we define another deliver function, an actual deliver function, which uh, any caller would, would call. Anything trying to send a message would call this. And we would use a configured environment to get uh, which which mailer to use. So in this case, we are defaulting to the Swoosh mailer that already uh, exists. Uh, but within tests, we would configure a different mailer that would be used. So this, this uh, there's a, we expect a key, an adapter key, 
and this is what we use and call deliver on it. So on production or on, on a dev environment, this would call the switch library and deliver emails as you would expect. Uh, but within a test, now this is where we make some changes. So using the mocks library, we define mock mailer module, uh, which implements our mailer behavior. And then we, we change the configuration by setting this in the, uh, as the adapter to be used whenever the mailer behavior is used. So any, any caller trying to send an email uh, would compose an email in this normal swoosh uh, manner and instead call the behaviors deliver method. So this would take care of delivering using whichever adapter is configured. So when you move on to our test, uh, what we have is a, a, a clause that checks uh, when the email address is already registered to return an error. I think this is what we had before. Uh, what we are interested in, in is the second clause, uh, where when we try to deliver an email, an email is actually sent. So what happens here is we have to say that we are expecting uh, a call to the mailer, uh, mailer deliver function. So this is um, enforced by calling this in our setup. So if the email is not sent or the email function is not called, then our test will fail because of the call to verify your method. So we have that, we say we expect uh, that function to be called. And then we make the actual uh, function call to send the verification. So this function would make, would send the email and therefore this would uh, be called as expected. So something to mention that's uh, interesting is uh, you could do some fancy things like match on the message to make sure it's the right message or return something different. So perhaps, for example, you want to handle uh, failure to send emails uh, a different way. So you could return something that you expect, maybe an error to book, and handle that a different way. That would also be very easy to test because you can actually see what you, you can, can write what you expect and see it uh, clearly within the test. And finally, let me move on to uh, using tags. Uh, so I think there's some common tags that uh, you usually have uh, within it. Uh, you might have come across the skip tag, uh, but an interesting use case for tags would be uh, in a scenario like what we have here, we, we could have a page that requires some sort of authentication. Uh, so what we would do for that, uh, because what tags are good for is tags would pass information back to your setup function that you can do something with. So we would simply define a tag with uh, whatever you, you, you deem uh, appropriate. So in this case, we just define an Atom authenticator and we'll handle this uh, within our setup function. So we expect that uh, a call to this uh, URL would succeed because uh, the user is authenticated. If the user was not authenticated, they would fail. So how we would use this is uh, for any test that you expect authentication, you would add this tag. For any test that you would not, you would not add the tag. So to look at how that exactly would work, um, in the usual fashion, uh, in, in a con case, you always have, uh, you have this call that creates uh, a connection using the Phoenix contest. So we pipe that down to uh, our own function, uh, our own maybe authenticate function and we pass it the tag authenticate. So if the tag was not defined, this would be a nil. If it was defined, it would be whatever uh, is specified as a tag. In this case, uh, just specifying tag and authenticate would result in the tag being set to true. So in our function clauses, uh, for the nil, we return the connection as is uh, and modify it. But when authenticate is set to true, we want to authenticate a user. So here, uh, our data factory comes in handy once more. So we insert, um, insert a uh, test user. And then we use uh, whatever functionality you already have uh, to create a user session. So in this case, we're using the same function that's generated by the Phoenix Gen or uh, Phoenix task. 
passing in the user, it'll give us back a token. And then we would um, put that token inside the session. So with this in place, uh, your usual plug pipeline would be called and it would pull the token from the user and it would authenticate the user. So by the time you're trying to access a URL, the user will already be authenticated. So it's pretty straightforward that you can uh, reuse across across your your tests whenever you need uh, authentication and any other tag. Uh, as I mentioned, yes, uh, we can use tags to skip some tests. So you might have maybe some skill tests or some tests that need refactoring, but your CD, CICD pipeline perhaps requires um, some level of um, coverage as such. You could you could choose to skip some tests. Uh, not a good idea, but um, sometimes it, it it becomes necessary. You could also use tags uh, to filter which tests to include or to exclude. So you could just tag a test with uh, whatever you need. Perhaps you could say, hey, uh, I'm tagging this test with a API call. And you'd want to skip those in some scenarios and run them in other scenarios. Uh, a productivity tip uh, that I find very useful is uh, when running tests, is to suffix the test with uh, the line number. So you put a colon and the line number and you'll only run that particular test. So if you're working on a particular feature and only running a few tests, uh, you don't want to run the entire file or the entire test suite. You could simply run a few file, a few lines uh, and a few tests just to get, uh, get you moving a bit faster. And uh, with that, uh, I come to the end of my, my presentation. And um, I'm happy to take any, any questions and feedback. Thank you very much, Larry, for what you've managed to equip us with. We are very glad that we are all going to live here very knowledgeable and with lots and lots of tricks now that you can be able to use. Um, seems like I have logged out from the other stream. <laughs> Do we have any questions, Paulette, if you can assist? No, we don't have any questions. So. Yeah, but anyone with a question now can just uh, type it in.